Hello, I am Diana Mandrilla and in this presentation I will try to provide a brief introduction to latent class analysis. LCA refers to a family of procedures aiming to distinguish unobservable homogeneous subgroups within a population. The following presentation provides a general description of LCA. It describes the latent class model and explains the steps involved in latent class modeling such as model specification, model estimation, and model selection. Finally, the presentation includes an empirical application of LCA with binary indicators using the M plus 7.4 software. First of all, what is latent class analysis? A variety of phenomena examined in social sciences can be described using latent models, which, in general, help identify groups of individuals or entities that have some characteristics in common. Usually, the array of observed data is too complex for us to identify groups through inspection alone. Therefore, multivariate classification procedures, such as latent class analysis, should be employed for this purpose. For instance, some researchers use latent class analysis to develop a typology or a classification of adult-child-parent relationships using a sample of 4,990 individuals. Based on a set of observed variables measuring multiple dimensions of solidarity and conflict, latent class analysis helped differentiate five types of relationships harmonious, ambivalent, obligatory, affective, and discordant. These types were then further differentiated by age, gender, family size, parental marital history, and geographic distance. Another example is a study that used data from 43,000 individuals to differentiate groups based on the degree of illicit drugs abuse or dependence. LCA helped distinguish five classes, no abuse or dependence at all, cannabis abuse or dependence only, stimulants and hallucinogen abuse or dependence, prescription drug abuse or dependence, and polysubstance abuse or dependence. Lazarfeld and Henry brought the first major contribution to the development of LCA. Although they were not the first suggesting the possibility of estimating categorical latent variables, they were the first authors to provide a detailed, comprehensive, mathematical, and conceptual description of LCA. Nevertheless, the absence of a reliable and general method for calculating parameter estimates prevented researchers from implementing this method. The use of LCA became more widespread after 1974 when Goodman developed a more general procedure for computing maximum likelihood parameter estimates. This procedure was similar to the later developed expectation maximization algorithm. LCA was then placed in the log linear model framework which increased its generalizability. This allowed researchers to assess model fit and to estimate more complex models such as LCA with covariates and individual growth trajectories using longitudinal data. From this point on, several other procedures from, for modeling changes over time in latent class memberships have been developed. Latent class analysis is a multivariate classification procedure which allows researchers to group cases based on similarities and differences. This method is sometimes referred to as finite mixture modeling, mixture likelihood approach to clustering, or mixture modeling based clustering. In fact, LCA is a special case of finite mixture modeling which is a general term for modeling using categorical latent variables where latent variables represent a set of subpopulations and the population membership is not known but inferred from the data. As implied by its name, LCA hypothesizes and estimates a latent variable model, which means that a categorical variable free of measurement error is postulated. This latent variable that underlies the data is inferred based on a set of observed variables rather than measured directly. Like other statistical procedures that examine latent variables such as item response theory, factor analysis, latent trait analysis, LCA aims to isolate the latent variable from its error of measurement. 
This is similar to factor analysis where underlying latent variables are inferred based on the relationships among observed variables. Nevertheless, factor analysis aims to group variables and is therefore a variable-oriented multivariate classification procedure. In contrast, LCA groups individuals and is considered a person-oriented multivariate classification procedure. Further, in LCA, the latent variable is categorical rather than continuous, which means that classes do not necessarily differ quantitatively, but have distinct combinations of characteristics and represent a phenomenon that is inherently categorical rather than continuous. Latent class analysis is also similar to cluster analysis in that both methods are person-oriented multivariate classification procedures aiming to group individuals based on similarities and differences. Both procedures assume that cases belong to a set of k homogeneous groups and the number and size of such groups are not known a priori. Nevertheless, there are some important distinctions between cluster analysis and latent class analysis. Cluster analysis is conducted at the observed level, whereas latent class analysis hypothesizes that a latent model underlies the data and groups cases using model-based probabilities. Further, LCA estimates the measurement error of the grouping variable, which is reflected in group membership probabilities. LCA admits that the classification process may have a certain degree of uncertainty and calculates for each individual the probability of belonging to each of the classes specified in the latent model. Additionally, LCA allows the computation of fit indices which show how well the latent model fits the data. The latent class method relies on the assumption that homogeneous subpopulations exist within the data. These subgroups have distinct probability distributions and are mutually exclusive. Because these subpopulations do not overlap, all classes together account for 100% of the population. Further, LCA assumes that the number of latent classes specified by the latent model is correct. Another assumption is that of local independence. Specifically, LCA assumes that all relationships among the observed variables are accounted for by the latent class membership. A general mixture model includes a measurement model, or the LCA model, and the structural model. The LCA model is a multivariate regression model that describes the relationships between a set of observed variables and the latent categorical variable. As illustrated in this figure, LCA explains the relationships between a set of R observed dependent variables I, also referred to as observed indicators, and an underlying latent categorical variable C. Observed indicators can be binary, ordered or unordered categorical, censored, counts, or continuous variables. For an LCA model with R observed variables I and the latent categorical variable C with K classes, the marginal item probability for item IJ equals 1 is provided in the first formula. The second formula expresses the joint probability of all R observed indicators I. This formula is slightly different when the observed variables are continuous, as you can see in the third formula included on this slide. Latent class analysis includes several classification procedures that rely on the same general model exploratory LCA, confirmatory LCA, latent profile analysis latent transition analysis, multi-level LCA, and so on. Most often, LCA is employed as an exploratory technique. However, LCA can also be conducted as a confirmatory procedure by placing constraints on model parameters that reflect the researcher's hypothesis. When the observed indicators are continuous, LCA is referred to as latent profile analysis. 
LPA is based on the assumption of a multivariate normal distribution, meaning that the joint distribution of the continuous observed indicators is normal within each class. The LTA approach is a variation of LCA for longitudinal data and allows researchers to examine transitions between leading classes across time. Multilevel LCA is employed with data from complex sampling designs or multilevel data. As the assumption of local independence is often violated, multilevel LCA allows researchers to account for the nested structure of the data. M plus allows the estimation of exploratory and confirmatory LCA models, LTA models, as well as multilevel LCA models. Further, M plus allows researchers to estimate relationships between latent categorical variables and second order factors, covariates or observed dependent variables, also known as distal outcomes. This presentation will focus on the exploratory LCA model. Based on the type of variables used as latent class observed indicators, relationships are estimated using linear regression equations for continuous variables, censored inflated normal regression equations for censored variables, logistic regression equation for binary or ordered categorical variables, multinomial logistic regressions for nominal variables, or Poisson or zero inflated Poisson regression equation for count variables. M plus allows researchers to select an estimation method by using the estimator option of the analysis command. Researchers may select estimation methods such as maximum likelihood, robust maximum likelihood, or Bayesian estimation. The default estimation method for mixture modeling in M plus is MLR. This method uses log likelihood functions derived from the probability density function underlying the latent class model. The procedure to which cases are assigned to categories of an underlying latent variable is an iterative one. Researchers have the option of specifying starting values or to use automatic starting values with random starts. The specification of starting values is similar to using seed values for k-means clustering algorithms. Estimation is iterated until parameters converge to the same solution from multiple sets of starting values, at which point are considered most likely to be representative of a, of a latent class. If the solution does not replicate even with many random sets of starting values, the data may not have the number of classes specified by the latent class model. Although MLR estimation corrects standard errors and test statistics, other estimators such as Bayes may provide more accurate results with small sample sizes, ordinal data, and non-normal continuous variables. Estimated model parameters include item means and variances by latent class. Further, results include, for each case, the probability of membership to each class. These coefficients are also referred to as posterior probabilities and add up to one across latent classes. Latent class memberships are determined through modal assignment by assigning individuals to the latent class with the largest probability of membership. With exploratory latent class analysis, the number of latent classes that underlie the data is not known a priori. Typically, several models with different numbers of latent classes are estimated and compared. The process of determining the number of latent classes is often referred to as class enumeration. The final number of latent classes is determined based on several criteria which refer to the interpretability of model parameters in relation to theory and prior research, the precision of the classification process, and the extent to which each model fits the data. Like factor analysis, latent class analysis requires researchers to evaluate the sensibility of latent class solutions. Despite the fact that interpretability relies more on the judgment of the researcher, it is an important criterion in selecting the optimal latent class solution. 
Item means and variances along with the size and demographic composition of latent classes are examined to make sure that each latent class describes a distinct and meaningful pattern and makes sense based on existing information on the topic. Latent classes are labeled based on their patterns of high and low item means while making sure that class definitions have substantive meaning. Another criterion for selecting the optimal latent class model is represented by measures of classification precision. As mentioned before, for each case, posterior probabilities indicate the likelihood of membership to each latent class. Individuals are assigned to the latent class with the highest probability of membership, but may have fractional class memberships to the other classes. In a model with a high degree of classification certainty, the probability of membership is close to 1 for one class and close to 0 for all the other classes specified in the model. Results from the entire sample are aggregated in a k-by-k -K table where k represents the number of latent classes specified in the model. The diagonal elements of this table represent the class average posterior probabilities. They reflect the percentages of correctly classified cases and are considered indices of classification certainty. When classes are easily distinguished, these coefficients are close to 1. The off-diagonal elements of the k-by-k -K table represent the proportions of misclassified cases and should be close to zero. The m LCA results include a k-by-k -K table of classification probabilities for the most likely latent class membership by latent class and a k-by-k -K table of average latent class probabilities for most likely latent class membership by latent class. Another indicator of classification certainty is entropy, which summarizes the information in the k-by-k -K tables into one index. This index shows how well the entire class model predicts class memberships. The entropy index ranges from 0 to 1, where values closer to 1 indicate superior class membership prediction. Selecting the optimal model also relies on the examination of a set of goodness of fit indices, which show the extent to which a latent class model fits the data. The goodness of fit indices estimated by M plus are the BIC, the sample size adjusted BIC, and the AIC. These coefficients do not have specific cutoffs. Lower AIC and BIC values indicate better fit and better model parsimony or achieving an acceptable model fit with the minimum number of classes. As the number of parameters increases, AIC and BIC values tend to also increase. AIC and BIC are therefore relative fit indices that allow comparisons across solutions with a different number of classes or with different model specifications. The M plus LCA output also includes the results of the low mendel rubin likelihood ratio test. This test compares models with the same specifications but different numbers of latent classes. Specifically, when the model includes k latent classes, LMR tests the hypothesis that k minus 1 classes are underlying the data. A significant test statistic indicates that the model with k classes is superior to the k-1 model. The number of latent classes is increased by 1 until a non-significant test statistic is obtained, at which point the k-1 model is considered superior. The following example illustrates the estimation of a latent class model with binary observed indicators using the M plus 7.4 software. The goal of this research project was to differentiate latent classes of bullying and cyberbullying victimization based on the prevalence of different forms of face-to-face -face or traditional bullying victimization and cyberbullying victimization in U.S. adolescents. Data for the study were collected by the National Center for Education Statistics and the Bureau of Justice Statistics 
using the 2013 School Crime Supplement of the National Crime Victimization Survey. Households were selected using a stratified multi-stage cluster sampling design. The school crime supplement was administered to all eligible respondents ages 12 through 18 within these households. In 2013, a total of 5,008 adolescents completed a school crime supplement. From this sample, individuals without any missing responses on selected variables were included in this study. So the resulting sample included 4,939 individuals. A set of 14 binary survey items was used as input for LCA. These observed indicators were used to specify a categorical victimization variable C, as illustrated in this figure. Seven of these variables measure traditional bullying victimization, while the other seven variables measured cyberbullying victimization. To identify the optimal latent class model, models with two, three, four, and five latent classes were estimated using robust maximum likelihood estimation with automatic random starts. These models were compared based on the interpretability of latent classes, measures of classification precision, and goodness of fit indices. Although only Model 2 had a significant test statistic on the LMR test, Model 4 had the highest entropy, 0.92, and the lowest BIC value, as you can see in this table. Further, the classes included in the 4-class model were the most informative and had clearly distinguishable characteristics. Therefore, Model 4 was selected as the optimal latent class model. Average latent class probabilities and average classification probabilities showed accurate assignment of cases to groups with classification probabilities ranging from 70.1% and 99.6% as you can see in Table 2 and average latent class probabilities ranging between 87.8% and 97.6% in Table 3. The four latent classes included in Model 4 differed in the extent to which individuals were victims of different forms of traditional bullying and cyberbullying. The most numerous group included 4,274 individuals and was labeled non-victims because these individuals experienced little or no bullying victimization. The second largest group included 486 individuals and was labeled traditional victims. The majority of individuals in this group experienced traditional forms of bullying such as being made fun of, being called names or insulted, or being the subject of rumors. The third group included 107 individuals. This group was labeled cyber victims. A large proportion of this latent class was the subject of rumors and also experienced high levels of other forms of cyberbullying, such as being insulted through text messaging, through instant messaging, or chat, or through hurtful internet posts. The fourth group included 72 individuals and was the smallest in size, but experienced increased levels of both traditional bullying and cyberbullying and was therefore labeled traditional victims and cyber victims. Most individuals in this group were the subject of rumors, had been made fun of, called names or insulted, were excluded from activities on purpose, were pushed, shoved, tripped, or spit on, and threatened with harm. Individuals in this latent class also experienced high levels of cyberbullying by being threatened or insulted through text messaging hurtful internet posts, or instant messaging. For each observed indicator, M plus also calculated odds ratios to compare item probabilities across latent classes. Statistically significant odds ratio values showed that members of the TVCV latent class were significantly more likely than individuals in the CV latent class to be victimized through hurtful posts on the internet. Similarly, the TVCV latent class recorded significantly higher probabilities 
of traditional victimization and victimization via hurtful internet posts than individuals in the TV and the NV laden classes. On this slide, you can see the M plus code that was used for the study that I have just presented. As you can see, the syntax is relatively simple and can be used as an example for other similar projects. Of course, the M plus user's guide provides more information on the different commands and options that can be used and also provides additional examples. In conclusion, latent class modeling refers to a family of procedures aiming to distinguish unobservable, homogeneous subgroups within a population. Although similar in purpose to cluster analytic algorithms such as k-means, LCA is conducted at the latent level rather than the observed level. Unlike factor analysis, LCA allows the estimation of categorical latent variables and groups individuals rather than variables. The M plus software allows researchers to estimate a variety of latent class models using several types of observed variables and several estimation methods. M plus also calculates measures of classification precision and a series of goodness of fit indices which permit comparisons across latent class models with different specifications. With the relatively simple code, researchers can run this complex latent modeling procedure and obtain a wide range of parameter estimates, goodness of fit indices, and measures of classification precision.